The thing that is magnificent about photography is that it can produce images that incite emotion based on the subject matter alone. To me, photography must suggest, not insist or explain. Hey, welcome to the Street Shots Photography Podcast. This is Antonio. And this is Ward. And welcome to episode 143, 143 for the middle of September 2021. This time I got it right, not 2020. Yeah, not 2020. <laughs> we don't want no 2020. We're, we don't we're want done no 2020. With 20. We're, we're done. <laughs> I know, but it's it's starting to, it's starting up again. All the nonsense. I don't want to get into it, but, you know, the nonsense yeah. is starting again. And the nonsense, yes. Yeah. Well, whatever. I mean, you know, everybody take care of themselves. Uh, how's it going over there where you are? In Things general? are pretty good. Yeah. Things are good. I had a good day of work. Um, we, That's right. Uh, work. You're yeah, a working I work. Guy. I'm a working guy, and we had a nice day today. It was yeah. nice, and I'll, maybe I'll go out for a walk or something. I went out with a friend last night and shot some pictures in the golden hour. Um, oh, well. which I haven't done in maybe years. I don't know. So I got some nice pictures along the river downtown, and uh, oh, it was the golden great. hour is the hour before sunset, right? Before sunset, yeah. Right. And then the blue hour is the hour after sunset. Sure. If it, <laughs> I only know from golden hour. Just, What's the what, 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 what is it before and after sunrise? Are those golden? I don't and know blue because too? I would think. Like, I would think after before sunrise it's like the pink hour because it's always it always seems more magenta in sunrise. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know. I, the, I guess the golden hour after sunrise because it's the same, right? It's almost yeah. the same light. It's a golden hour, maybe not the golden hour. Yeah, not the golden hour. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I have not been out in the golden hour. I haven't done any sunrises or anything like that. I, I've barely I've barely photographed anything. Although I wasn't I was in Greenwood. Uh, a couple times this weekend, mm. uh, hoping that I could catch a bald eagle. Because um, there's one. Uh, in like the photograph it, not like use yes, your gloves not, and I'm grab it. Yes, I'm not catching it. it. No, I'm not. Okay, yeah, no, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how aggressive the birders are in New York, so I just no, don't. No, no. <laughs> Actually, I, I, went, I went yesterday, and uh, I was hoping to catch an osprey because I mm. did see one a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And as I was, I, I heard what sounded like helicopters flying, and I looked, and there were th- the three presidential Osprey um, aircraft oh. <laughs> flying over. I guess because the president is the president was visiting today to to check the the, um, the damage from the hurricane. Oh, right. Right. So his pre, you know, three plane uh, convoy. What do we call three planes in a row? Yeah. Um, the real one and two decoys and they're always changing around. Yeah. Yeah. So I did get an Osprey. It just wasn't the Osprey I was looking for. It was a mechanical Osprey. It's a mechanical one. Yeah. They're they're cool anyway. The Mm -hmm. weirdest looking aircraft. Anyway, we're going off on all these things. Let's get right to the, to the heart of the matter. We have a uh, guest uh, on this episode. Her name is, uh, I'm going to, I hope I don't butcher this. So Sandra Cataneo Adorno. And uh, how did we find her? We uh, found her actually when we talked to Mel Breyer um, uh, about the uh, Women Street Photographers book. Right, right. And she's one of the featured photographers in she's there. Right. Yeah. And the uh, publisher sent uh, uh, sent us a copy of the book, and uh, we were able to secure an interview with her. Yeah. Uh, and uh, without much further banter <laughs> from us, the banter's over. The banter's Next over. With the banter. Let's yeah, let's get right into the interview. So here's our discussion with uh, Sandra Cataneo Adorno. Thank you, Sandra, for joining us today uh, in in this international conversation. Uh, you're joining us from where are you in Italy right now? Asolo near Treviso. No, Treviso. Oh, are you because there on a, no, a vacation the, or? Well, the there? weekend was a vacation, but uh, there's a Treviso photo festival that I'm a special guest, so I came. Oh yeah, to, really? Yeah, to see oh, yeah? about cool. it because they they couldn't do very much with the COVID, so this is. Oh, okay. So, okay. So I'm yeah. interested. I'm going there this afternoon to 
to see what uh, they've put posters all over the town of many oh, photographers. Wonderful. Really? So, wow, yeah. that sounds so great. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So thanks for joining us on the show. And I want to start with, um, you know, I want you to sort of just tell us a little bit about your journey in photography. I've been reading, you know, some of the articles about you, but I'd like to share that with the audience and hear it from you. What uh, your story is really interesting. So um, I. Uh... I never did any photography. I had these, you know, these little Sony cameras. That yeah. You just yeah. clicked. That's the only thing I had. And I never thought of photography, but my daughter, she minored in photography. And so she invited me to this uh, workshop and it was a, it was my birthday. Oh. So <laughs> she gave, gave me as a gift. And I said, what a funny gift because I don't know how to do anything. <laughs> no, zero. I really mm -hmm. didn't know how to do anything. And I really was the worst student that I think Alex and Rebecca Webb had ever had in their lives. Really? Why, why do you think you were the worst? Because I didn't know even the camera. I didn't I didn't understand what is focus. Nothing, nothing. <laughs> so my husband had this old camera and he said, okay, take my old camera. You know, it was 10, 12 years old. Take my old camera. It was a chunky thing. And I went and, and I, I enjoyed it a lot. My pictures, obviously, I was the worst student by far. <laughs> And it, they were very kind with me because, you know, I had, I remember I had a picture of a ball, a tennis ball. And they said, oh, this is very interesting. I never saw someone take pictures of a tennis ball. <laughs> they had nothing. I mean, they had, they wanted to say something nice, but it was really a disaster. What kind, of, what kind of class was it when you say it was a workshop? What was the, what uh, was the theme of it? Street photography. Street photography? Oh, it was okay. five days in Barcelona. So it mm -hmm. was fun. I was with my daughter. The objective was to be with my daughter. and uh, mm -hmm. But I didn't know I would like it. <laughs> so, and I had to bother my daughter a lot because not only I didn't know how to take pictures, so I took some very bad ones, but also you had the assignment of every day. You had to choose the ones you thought were best, pass mm -hmm. it to the computer. Obviously, I didn't know how to do that. And edit, which I didn't know. So I had to ask my daughter to edit, to pa put it in a USB, for us to show it in class next day. So mm -hmm. all that, my daughter, I don't know if she said, oh, my God, this was the worst gift. I had to work <laughs> for myself and for my mother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I couldn't, I didn't know anything. Mm. And But it was fun because uh, I I realized that I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed, I think the first reaction I had, I really enjoyed maybe for the first time in my life to look around me, to mm. notice things. I never, I never, you know, you walk, you never stop normally. Mm -hmm. And I began to notice people, movements, reactions, the landscape, the architect really i stopped so that was very nice feeling i liked that very much had you not been doing that before when you were just taking on vacations or no or this trips? The, no i never hmm. after that this was the first time i <clears throat> i had a cam a real camera and right. after that i began for like two years maybe to take my camera on holidays Mm. I mean, I had the Instamatic that I took on holidays with my family, but I never, I just took pictures of my family, you know, what mm -hmm. everyone does with the little stuff. But after the Alex and Rebecca, I spent two years, when I went on holidays, I took my camera and I enjoyed it. And, and then later, after two or three years, two years and a half, I began to, to really go out with my camera every day. Then it's a next step. Mm -hmm. But with Rebecca and Alex, uh, I said to them, I'm very sorry I'm, I, I keep your class behind because I'm, you know, I'm doing something, you know, for the first time. But they, they didn't mind and they were very kind with me. They said, no, continue. 
do it. We can talk about it. They left me very at ease. So, And there's something that I think was important. I found the perfect coaches for mm-hmm. that, for not knowing anything that mm-hmm. didn't criticize me. And mo- more important even than that, my daughter never criticized me. Because if mm-hmm. she had, I would have been, okay, I don't know how to do this. I'm going, you know, I'll mm-hmm. close yeah. up. Yeah. Because it's difficult, at, you know, at 60, for you to do something you never did. And if someone begins to criticize you, then it's it's tough. But she never did. She said, Mother, it's good. It's good. It will get better tomorrow. It will get better mm. tomorrow. Wow. Wow. So wow. it was nice. And then we did also another trip to a workshop in Japan with uh, Pinkesoff also. And it was a lot of fun also. Wow. Yeah. So, um, uh, Ward, you ever? Yeah. Um, well, we can talk about the webs. Did you stay in contact with them after after yes, the workshop? I'm, yes. Always. And so you're, there's some back and forth now, and they've always we oh, always talk, nice. and and they are helping me now on my third book that I hope to print in the beginning of next year. They are helping me. So I kept in touch. I think because I was the older one in the class, also mm. more or less. I'm. I think I'm Alex's age, or a little mm. bit older than Alex. But I think that that was easier for us to to talk and talk about children. You know, he has a kid, and talk about. Sometimes I said, "Oh, my daughter didn't come to your class. She went party, so yeah. I could kill her." <laughs> and he said, "I understand. I have a kid also. I understand." So, so when was this class in Barcelona? How long ago? From today, eight years ago. It was about eight years ago. Yeah. So I um, was sixty. It was my sixtieth birthday present oh, so for your birthday. Wow. Yeah. It was what March sixty. Yeah. yeah. Great present. Yeah. <laughs> I paid the hotel. <laughs> yeah. And the food. She paid the workshop, which was great. <laughs> yeah. Well, what a great way to connect with your daughter too. I mean, to have yeah. that kind of have that kind of um, uh, experience. You know, it's so like you know. You started this eight years ago. I'm thinking, like, you must have always been a photographer until eight years ago. You just didn't know it. No, they didn't know the first thing about it. But that's that's the lesson that was, for me, amazing, is to understand that, I, that in the end, we may, be di- we may die without knowing that we are good at something that we never thought about because we mm. weren't exposed to it. I yeah. was exposed to it only because my daughter liked photography. Yeah. But I never thought I would ever take photo. I would never do something like that. Mm, but yeah. that's the thing is, if I was exposed to, I don't know, sculpture, would I be any good or yeah. something else, you know? So that's yeah. my, I think we have much more inside of us that we don't know and maybe mm. we will never know because we don't have time because we are obsessed with every day and doing things it's difficult to stop and okay let me dedicate to something because it's a, it can be you know maybe it would have lasted six months i would say oh i'm really bad at this mm. so i had read in in uh, your bio that you had this uh because of the the jaw the work that you had been doing before you discovered photography that you had this perfectionism going on in 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 the work that you had been doing before so did that translate pretty quickly into your photography or this was a completely this was a completely different world completely different i think that before i always wanted more of myself and I had to be better at it. Mm. And with photography, it was like a gift. So whatever I do, I'm very happy about it. And it's not something... I've been to classes that people cry and they're so frustrated. And I I go to them and say, don't be... Mm. Do it as a joy, something that you have... Because that's how I feel. Uh, Because I was older and... Really, if I'm good at it, that's great. If I'm not, it's fine. You know, I've done my thing. So Mm -hmm. I've done other things. So this is a gift that came from nowhere. So uh, I don't, 
I don't need to be a perfectionist and I don't need to be good all the time and I don't need it. Whatever comes and some, if I have a price, I'm, oh, you know, I'm so <laughs> yeah. happy because yeah. it's, you know, it's something that really, it's a great joy and unexpected. It's, uh, yeah. I don't need to, I, I think I lost a lot of my time in life being a perfectionist and I lost mm. a lot of good moments trying to be, you know, a hundred percent there. And I don't know, ah, I let it go with photography, which was, a, it's one of the reasons it's so good for me mentally. It's mm -hmm. very, very healthy for me. Why did you decide to let it go? What was that? Like, what was that I moment? I didn't decide. It's, it just happened. It happened. Yeah. It happened. It, I didn't. It's because I'm not asking of myself something. You know, before I, I had people that wanted me to do this or I had to work a lot or I had, and people were expecting of me. And this one, no one expects. I mean, if you do it, you do it. If you don't, you don't. And so right. it was fine just to be whatever if i don't feel like it i don't go out with my camera if i feel like it i go and it's okay i'm okay with it i'm i'm it's a it's a more peaceful phase of my mm. life mm. what well, can i ask what you were doing prior to photography oh it was business business you were in the yeah. business one. yeah there's yeah. a family business and um i had the school also for underprivileged kids in brazil mm -hmm. Uh, and that type of thing, but uh, uh, more more focused in uh, yeah numbers and achievements and goals. So and using yeah using your I want to say what part of your brain using <laughs> exactly your, the completely right part of your different <laughs> completely yeah. different. <laughs> yeah, well, that's quite a shift to go from from a uh, business world to suddenly going into into photography. So. Um, uh, what was I going to ask? Um, so, uh, to talk about your photography, I was looking at your website and looking at your Instagram, um, which was pretty amazing. Uh, thank you. To, thank to you look so at much. All the, to see all your pictures at once, too. Um, I mean, I've, I've first looked at the book that uh, we'll talk about in a minute, um, but then going to your, your website and, and seeing the, the, just the amount of photography that you're, you're outputting, um, uh, my question is, uh, <laughs> uh, so, so one of your, you know, in one of the interviews I read, um, you're a lot of your pictures of people, uh, and you, in one of your interviews, you said you're not a very social person. <laughs> and so, uh, and this is something I resonate with in some way, uh, but your photography <laughs> is almost exclusively people oriented. And so can you kind of talk about that a little bit? Like you're not a social person, but you're photographing people. So yes. what's that about a little bit? I think that one of the things that photography gave me is that I began, I, many times you're in your bubble, in your little world, and photography made me get out of my bubble and made me very much look at people around me and even sometimes connect with them, talk to them, mm -hmm. and see their different lives. And it was the first time I I questioned all these different lives that I see, how tough they are, how difficult. You see things that are very sad. You see very happy moments with kids, and and it's it's a very it's it's a very nice thing. Obviously, I'm not in in their lives, but I come out always asking myself, how will it be in half an hour when they go home? What would happen? You know, you always mm -hmm. stay with that questioning. What's this story? And uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's interesting. I think it's, uh, it was very, for me, it was very nice to get out of my, my everyday life and, and the, uh, and insert myself into mm. what so. surrounds me because I didn't pay attention before. Go ahead, so I'm, I'm guessing that, <clears throat> pardon me, um, you know, with the different cities that you traveled and, and you know, and the, the, the locations in your book um, and the influence of the webs right off the bat, 
you had this you had this access to travel and yes. street and you kind of went you know back and forth through that um so i mean we're going to get to the the your latest book in a moment but I wanted to talk a little bit about your travel images uh, or, or sorry your street images they're very they seem to me very fashion oriented like there's a, yeah. a kind of fashion perspective to it that y i don't see in other street work i was just wondering if you had some thoughts around that what what you're actually looking for when you're shooting in the street because some of the very provocative and interesting and dynamic and shot from low Thank angles you. and so on that that really that i it's so unique and wonderful and i was just wondering if you could speak a little about what are you looking for when you're out shooting in the street in particular yeah that's a good question because i was told by by a photographer that i should go out with an objective and i could never do that i always went out completely open minded and whatever i saw I don't know and why my eye catches this or the other. I have no idea. Obviously, there are many things that I take that obviously are not good. And you disc, because of digital camera, you can throw them away. <laughs> but I take a lot of pictures. I'm very quick, mm. very extremely quick. And I take an enormous amount of photography and and not very long i don't stay very long out maximum two hours then i get tired mm. and then i need to rest mm. but i like beauty i know that my eyes go to beauty i know mm. i appreciate beauty in many forms nature or people or dress or float i know that my eye enjoys it and appreciates it and pays attention to it mm. i'm very i see details that i know that most i drive my my husband nuts because i see details <laughs> in many things that obviously he doesn't yeah. and he said only you see it i said but it bothers me because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> i see the these tiny things so i think that that was my first book i I would say that the beauty of human being, of expressions, of the dresses flowing, things like that attracted me. Mm -hmm. uh, the second book, no, it was more the moment and the action. More mm -hmm. that vibe of that action, of that uh, real, the beach is very, a lot is going on at the same time, a mm -hmm. lot. So... And you divide it. Where do you look? <laughs> yeah. So it, it was a different kind of, uh, very different kind of book. And very interesting, both of them. I enjoyed doing both of them very much. Was it always in your uh, mind to be making uh, photos for a book or that just came, those just came out? How did... Came out. And when I had a few photos, I went to... This person, he's called uh, David Chicky from Radius. And I had done a workshop with the webs in Santa Fe. It was about editing at his office for, I think it was three days only. And David, in the beginning, he said, Sandra, I know you're with your daughter here. That's another workshop that I went with my daughter. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, but continue to do pictures. I said, ah, oh, no, I'm with my daughter. <laughs> and he said, no, no, continue to do pictures. So I went back to him when I had a few pictures, and I said, well, you encouraged me. Now I'm here. Do you want to do a book? Yeah. <laughs> and he said, yes. Oh. So I was very, very nice, and I like him very much. Uh, and... Um, and what was the question is... Uh, oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, again, I want to get into the books a little bit more detail in the in sort of a, a later. But there's something I want to ask you about your pictures. To go back to your photography again. You know, I, I noticed a lot of the uh, your, your pictures of deep shadows, very strong colors. Um, but you're also working with... Um, I, I, I looked at it and I first thought of collage. Uh, like almost double exposures or... 
whatever it is. And I'm not necessarily asking your technique, but I, I want to know what. Oh, I have uh, no technique. I'm very bad at technique. So, so then that's great. Um, <laughs> there's well, that's no actually, secret about it. I can never redo it again because that's really I have no idea. That's great because then it, I guess it always becomes a moment of discovery for you, always, right? That everything always. is something new. The bad thing is that I can never do it again because I have no idea what I did. Because but I'm very it, bad okay, technically. Right? I'm okay. very bad. I never studied photography. So I'm really, technically, I'm a disaster. So it's good and it's a great joy because obviously I do, I do it. And afterwards, it's a joy to see, oh, this is not bad. But I can't redo it. I can go back and I have no idea. Well, that's great. But t- tell us about the these these double exposure collage kind of images. Well, it's they're, refle- they're, they're reflections. Reflections. Yeah. Oh, okay. They're reflections. And I like it. I like it a lot. And I began to do it more with COVID, I think. Um, because I like that sense of reality. It is reality, but it's a distorted reality. So you think twice, you know, is it it's two people, one person, three people? Yeah. And so you can play with this notion of uh, true or not true. Right. Um, I'm thinking, you know, just going back to the street work, and you're talking about, you know, at the beach and all these things happening at a time and at, at the same time. And, uh, you know, in my work life, I like to hear, uh, people tell a, a war story about a particular awkward moment or a moment of truth that happens when they're working. And I like to hear the same from photographers, especially. Were there any awkward or interesting moments for you out on the street, like individually? Where like, yeah. I'm glad I got out of that situation or things were so wonderful and I met this wonderful family and so on. I wonder if you had a story uh, somewhere along there. Within, in I have work. a few. I have a few. One that that I think was important for me was once uh, I was in on the beach and s- there's this lady who comes to tell me, look, this guy is going to steal your camera because that happens in Brazil. You have to be ready to let go. If not, you die. So you really have to let go mm-hmm. if they come. And she said, he already stole two mobile phones around here and he's looking at you. He had the two or three, you know, they go in groups. Normally, there are three. One distracts you, one does that. And and she said, look, come sit with us. And it was amazing. Mm. She had this whole picnic, the whole family. I sat down with her. I stayed there. And then she said, you know, you shouldn't go around with a camera this size. <laughs> I said, I know. Every... <laughs> You well anyway. In Brazil, things are tough, and let us say this lady. I know she came up from the north zone of Rio because she had a picnic, a whole thing with, you know, she she. When you spend the whole day, it means you come from far away, mm. and you're going to stay with your family there, and then, this guy must have been also the north zone. Mm. And what I thought was, look, if they meet in the bus going back, he can hurt her. And Mm. she did this to me out Mm. of pure kindness. Pure kindness with nothing to gain. She would never see me again. I would never see her. I couldn't. Mm. And I, when she went away, I remember thinking, I hope I hope she goes in a different bus because, Mm. you know, they're really bad and they really hurt you for nothing, Mm. but they do. And so that was a very nice thing to see because people sometimes are really very, very kind with you and you don't Mm. expect them to get out of their way to help you. Wow. Do you find that, uh, like, after that experience that you're... um I don't know, sort of able to read the street better now or like, or are you still, you know, cause I, I, I live in New York, right. And I have that same kind of issue. Like I'm walking around with cameras and you know, is somebody, I, I, it's always been this way for me. Like I've actually had my camera stolen once when I was, a, when I was uh, in high school. And, um, and so I'm always kind of like on the lookout, you know, how far can I go with my camera and 
what can I do and stuff like that. Do you find that that, that experience sort of like um, has uh, has it helped you in any way? You know, like what do you take from that? From from uh... I think in Brazil you just it's much worse than New York. I mean, there's no yeah, comparison. Yeah, I imagine, yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, you have to, if you want to do photography, you have to get out there. And uh, the only thing is that you need really to be prepared. If they take it, let it go. Because I've seen people, I've seen people in front of me die because they didn't let go of the mm-hmm. wallet or of the camera. And then they stab you. Mm. And then that's really, that. you have to forget whatever it is. Okay, I can buy another one tomorrow. It's okay. Mm. You cannot, and my daughter was, uh, they wanted to steal her camera and she didn't let go. Oh, and she mm. had two guns in her head and she still wow. didn't let go. Whoa. And then they begin to hit her against the wall. And oh, then she let go. But you know, it. she could be dead. It's yeah. It's, you have to, and I asked her, you've heard me say you have to let go. Yes, but I didn't know I had that, this reaction when it happened. I mm-hmm. didn't know I would react like this. I said, why? Why? Mm-hmm. I always told you. But that's wow. how horrible things can happen. Mm. But I think you can't be intimidated. If not, you cannot take photography. Or if you want to take photography in Brazil, you have to. Just go and obviously not being in the streets at night and not being little alleys. If you have more people around you, you're safer. Mm-hmm. And there are many times that the people in the, um, in the street, they go after the guy who stole your camera. Really? For you. Oh. Yes. Wow. Wow. Which is amazing. You see three athletic guys going after the guy for your camera, <laughs> which you say, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Um, to go back to, uh, again, I read something in one of your interviews that, uh, you talked about is about your pictures again, that your, your childhood visions of strong light and bold color, which are very obvious in your pictures. Um, they, they, they lay dormant until you picked up a camera. So what were you doing before you picked up the camera to sort of satisfy this, these visions that you had as a child of strong light and color? Like I you had, I, you know, I, like, what did you do? I think I dressed with colors. Oh yeah, I, I You're wearing a very, very bright color. Yeah, blue I always outfit dress now. blue, reds, yellows, and I think decoration also. I used always bright colors when I needed to decorate my home. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Yeah. So, I think I decorated uh, things with bright colors. I always had this. I didn't know it would come out in my photography. <laughs> and how long after do you think, uh, like your first, uh, you know, the um, the workshop with the webs? When did you discover that you could sort of um, experience the colors and shapes through the camera? Like how long of a transition was that? It wasn't was or was it the first thing you did when you picked up the camera? You realized you could um, no. bring your childhood visions of color and form no, to life. No, I didn't even. Th- I don't think they came out. I was observing. I took a long time to. I was observing things around me. I wasn't. I think color went when more. I think I was more aware of color when I photographed in Brazil. I think Mm -hmm. because it's a very strong sun and it's a daily sun. Every day is sunny. So I think it was more there that I think I did more contrasts and more colors. It must have been with me, but I didn't realize it, I think. Well, it wasn't like a moment of discovery. It was just sort of an no. evolution, you think? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think so. Well, that, that brings us to a good point with uh, talking about the, your, your newest book, and I'm going to pronounce it in my best way. Uh, <laughs> Aguas de Uru, if that's close. Exactly. Perfect. And it, uh, in, in Portuguese, and it's, it's um, uh, Waters of Gold or Golden yes. Waters? Yeah, yeah exactly. Waters of Gold. 
And uh, the story is, I, I I received this from uh, the publisher. They they contacted us. Thank you, and very much. Oh, and they sent wonderful. us the book. And um, I looked through it, and I was uh, first of all, it's it's a very physical book, and I mean that in the sense that, um, like, you know, it's it doesn't it didn't come with a book jacket. It, it the picture I'm showing you just to to visualize this thing there's a picture printed on the cover that's overlapped to the back of it and the 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 i've noticed that the paper is very thick in it it's a very tactile feeling i can put the sound of me touching it and i also noticed that the the way it's printed it's printed in this gold ink and so we'll get into that in a minute but i want to i want to talk about the book the book is photographs that you've taken on the beach in um in rio in rio uh, one beach particular or yeah one beach what's the beach what was the Ipanema Ipanema okay yeah. so the, Ipanema. the girl from Ipanema exactly yeah. it's if exactly I had the right that. I would play it, the music if I was able to play have the rights for it <laughs> um so tell us how this evolved tell us how the the uh, uh your photographs evolved into a book let's let's get into that uh story a little bit like well I first began to photograph in a in another beach, Urca, that was more, I was less scared because mm -hmm. it was more families, mm -hmm. but not so interesting to photograph. So I began there. And then after six months, I said, okay, now I'm ready for Ipanema. Because Ipanema, there's a lot going on, you know, there's, uh, you know, a lot of confusion and nice things, bad things, but it, it's hectic. So I, mm. I got, I think I, I spent like two years taking pictures of Ipanema on and off because I don't stay very long. I mean, I go for a month, then I am away for six months, then I go back. Mm -hmm. But, and then when there was an, enough material, uh, I began thinking about putting this book together because it's memories of my childhood. Because I I lived in Brazil until I was... At the end of 12 years old, I left mm -hmm. Brazil. So mm -hmm. all my childhood with my parents was there, the beach, all these things, picnics on the beach and things like that, and friends. And So I think it was a nice way of going back to my childhood and looking at, I mean, it's a completely different beach than it was at that time, but it was very interesting to see the differences. And then I... I went to David Chiki from Radius and I showed him and he liked it very much and the idea of the of the metal ink and the gold ink and the silver ink that was all his. He's oh, an really? amazing really? artist. He's mm -hmm. an amazing artist. The thing is we didn't know if it was going to work because you do not know until you go to print this was we didn't know if it would be okay because it's, uh, you know, it's blue, yes, gold, and there's silver. So it's, and in the end it did work, but it was uh, all the press, the people at the press, they were very curious to know if it could, <laughs> yeah. how it would come out also. Because I was thinking, I, you know, as I'm looking through the book, the the pictures look like they were meant for a printing process like this like it yeah. it's almost like you yeah. sort of pre-visioned i wish i had the, that vision yeah really it would yeah. be so much easier in my life <laughs> no <laughs> it wasn't it was completely a leap he said you have to have give a leap of faith because we don't know what's coming out but he's very good he's very yeah. very good so it wasn't that difficult to let go with him because he knows what he got he's doing but it was completely it was trial and error and uh, we did a lot of uh, proofs mm -hmm. but it was never the same as as with the print so we never got to that the stage to understand if it would really be good so your selection but, of images and the sequencing and so on, you did that all first, and then it went to press, oh, or yes. you found, oh yeah, yes. so you, that was all sort of set in stone o already. And you were all, yeah. Oh okay. yes. Yeah. Already on the cover, we knew mm -hmm. what we wanted on the cover. Also, we didn't know that it would be with gold. Mm -hmm. 
mm. that we didn't know how it would be. So it uh, you no, know, it was a uh, it was very nice to go to press and and it was very nice because the people at this place EBS. They were all cheering for me, so it was uh, very nice <laughs> because they also didn't know what was yeah. coming out. <laughs> Everyone was taking that leap of faith, or just exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, it's all that more satisfying when you have the final yes. product. That's great. Yeah. So let's talk about some of the pi the pictures, the photography in it. Um, you're you're mostly working exclusively silhouettes or dark yes. shapes. Yes. Um, they're I wouldn't say they're black. They're monochrome color. They're it the I can see color, some color in it, but uh, is there color in it, or is it monochrome imagery? No, it's it. There's color, but I'm. There's color. I'm, it's against the light, it's so that's light, why yeah. you have this. Uh, and there's a. It's a very strong light, so you do see some colors, but it's very. There's a lot of silhouettes. So yeah, I work a lot with silhouettes. I always go to the against the light. Always, I well, always tell, choose tell us, that. Tell us about that a little bit. Why? What's the? What's that choice? That creative choice? I don't I think it's the mystery that that evokes in me. You know, it's it's real. It's that same thing of the that you said about the reflection, real. But who knows? It's one person, two or three. The silhouettes is the same. It's real. It's a real, but it's silhouettes. So it's like, well, is it? You don't define the person. Mm -hmm. You don't know really. So you have a mystery there. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like mystery and um in terms of like you know go back to the book for a second what are the choices to go from gold to blue to silver like what <laughs> what brought that about i mean because the, the book starts off in one color then in the middle we go to a different it's all tone blue in the it's middle. all blue um yeah. and then we go back to the warmth so there's some flow in the book in yeah. terms of the color what the tell us about that a little bit that was David's choice, and uh, I think the blue is where there's more water. Uh, there's blue, uh, but it was his choice of doing these three colors and doing it, you know, divided like that. He thought it would because it's only one beach. You, mm. it becomes monotonous also if you mm -hmm. do it the same, you know, one after the other because you always have the same mountain in the background. You have the same the visual is the same yeah. so it was a kind of to make it a little bit more interesting for you to at least change colors and and have more of a adventure in looking at the book i think that yeah, was and it, yeah and it's almost like you're going through a day at the beach you know it's like sunrise yeah. even though it's not necessarily sunrise sunrise middle of day and then sunset and so you have this sort of cross yeah. You know, you go in and day. out. You in go and in and out. out. Yeah. yeah. What I what I really enjoy about the the photographs is that they're not always all silhouettes. Sometimes you can see some of the people. Some there's some detail. Actually, that's why the printing is so good because um, it doesn't block up all the detail. So every night, like when you need to see somebody or you have some little bit of face in there, you can see it, and it's such a nice deliberate um, uh, printing of the image. But this one image, I'm gonna let's see if I can show it to you which I really enjoy. It's in the blue section, is this one. Yes. And you've got this flare. That I'll describe it so the audience can hear it. It's a silhouette, I think, of a, looks I like a, a young man or a woman. I can't tell from the shape. And they're, they're sort of cut off at the head and they're cut off at the hands, but there's a flare yes. that's coming into the, into the, um, into the lens. And it's, it's cutting right above their yeah. neckline. And it almost looks like you can see, I'll show again, it looks like you could see that there's clothing there, the way the um, the flare is lightening up the face. And you can see a little bit of the face, but there's still a lot of mystery in there. In yeah. this picture, I just, I keep coming back to this one. I don't but know it, why. It obviously was a mistake, the flare. And I have another one that, that there's the <laughs> mistake also. There's another one that has a flare that it looks like the moon, I think. And... Uh, uh, also, it's a flare. It's not the moon. Mm -hmm. It's the flare. Obviously, also a mistake. But it was a good mistake. So Very good mistake. Yeah. You have to <laughs> embrace it when you find, yeah. you know, a good mistake. And <laughs> that's one it. Of, one of the things I, I, I also am drawn to the book about is the way the water, water is depicted. Um, 
every every time you see water in this book is and i'm not sure if it's the way it's printed combination with the picture but the water looks almost three-dimensional like when you have these splashes like this one let's see if i can show you like like oh, that one. i'm sorry i can't i can't focus it but. I'll, I'll tell you what that is in on the beach you have a little shower oh for the people to shower themselves on the beach and so this is through that little shower people were thinking i was completely crazy <laughs> Or <laughs> taking pictures with that little shower, you know, a very rustic little thing coming. Yeah. And that's how it, it's through that. You know, even in even in this picture, put this next to me. This, this yeah. one. Sorry, again, I can't focus it because my lens yeah, is... Yeah, that's the, but the, the splash. Water, it, you know, the water looks like it's coming off the page. Um, it's such a nice... And again, the paper adds to that. The printing adds to that. Uh, it's all, I mean, like I said, it's a very tactile experience uh, looking at this book. Um, and I'm but, laying down, I think, in that one. I, I oh, nearly, really? Yeah, I nearly laid down to take it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when did you know that, when did you know that you were finished photographing the beaches? Like, how did you know at what point, like, <laughs> I, that's enough? And like, uh, you're going to make a book or you're going to start and, and start on your next project. I always, I, and I asked that because... <laughs> It's, it's sort never of a personal... finish. Yeah, it's difficult well, that. But I know there's a certain point where you said, okay, you know, and then you showed the 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 pictures to um sorry, what's his name again? David? David, um, yeah. Yeah, and he says we have a book here. But like when did you know and and I've when did you know to stop or when did you know to say, okay, this is good? I mean, I know Ward Ward has made his own book and uh, um you know, finding out that question like when do we we stop and we look and we say, okay, we've got enough here. So tell us about that a little bit. I think I think you, for me, I think I was, I still got some very nice picture after the book that I couldn't put it in the book because it was already printed. But I think there's a moment that you know you had enough of repeating the same thing. And mm -hmm. you want to go to another stage, another kind of picture. You mm -hmm. want to Im let your mind invent something else. And I think that was it. And I had to let go to begin my this third book that I'm going to print that is completely different. But if I don't let go, I'll stay there. I mean, if that would be the perfectionist. If I were more of a perfectionist, I would stay many mm -hmm. more years because it's never perfect. So you'll always stay there. But nowadays, because the, I'm 68, I have to count also how long can I have... You know, that that's a, a calculation that younger people don't need to do. I need mm -hmm. to do it because I don't have so many years. So I have to let go. I have to, mm -hmm. okay, it's two years of this project and I have to go to something else. If I want to challenge myself, I need to let it go. Mm -hmm. If not, you know, I'm 68. How long, you know, how long? Yeah. A that, long that aside, time. there isn't so <laughs> much. So. A very long time. We <laughs> We can keep letting yeah. go if it means we get to see more books and more um, material <laughs> coming for you. Um, I got, had a question about um, just photo books. I know now this is this is your this will be your fourth book now coming out that you're working third, on right third, now. The third, third one. Um, do you collect photo books? Is that something that no. you do? No, and I don't. Or you have any influences beyond the webs and their help and David at the publisher? Um, do, you know, do you seek out anything, uh, like other people's work besides your own experience of going out to shoot? Yes. I try to look at other people and exhibitions and, and, but yeah, I think that all counts and it's stored somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I think that what for me because I didn't have very much knowledge of photographers when I began, obviously, because I didn't know anything about photography, so mm -hmm. I didn't know anyone. But I think in, uh, I had art around me, so mm -hmm. uh, I grew up knowing about art and museums and things like that. So I think something stayed in my mind uh, mm -hmm. that I'm not conscious but sometimes I see a picture that I took. I said, ah, 
this reminds me of mm. this paint. There's a feeling. Yeah. And, uh, and, and it stays. It, it, you can't, you don't know why or when it happens or why it happens. But I think that helps a lot. But I don't have, I'm not a very, as I didn't stu study photography, I just look at books, but I'm not fixated on one style or one person. Yeah. No. To, um, to, uh, let me ask you about your first book, because I saw a video presentation of it, which I thought was incredibly interesting. The, uh, the, the presentation was the book was being opened and you look at the pictures by flipping the pages. Yeah. Uh, vertically is the best way I can describe it. And uh, the hands were showing, you know, each page left and right being opened up. And then you had two pictures. But I noticed that one of the things that could happen in that is that you could open the pictures at different rates. And so the juxtaposition between the two photographs could change. How did how did you come up with that idea? Or how well, did that I, I come didn't. Up? Oh, you didn't. But, but I didn't. I but you agreed to it. You oh, would, yeah. Oh, immediately. What, I'll what tell you why. That? Yeah. Because... It's a much easier way to print. If it's your first book and you don't need to do a book that connects this picture with this, when you have this fluidity, if you paired it wrongly, it's not that important because they are like two separate blocks. So your chance of getting it right is much bigger. So obviously I didn't invent it, but when I saw it, I said, my chances of getting this right is much bigger now. <laughs> so we did pair one with one. There's a connection, but you can think maybe for you, one with one is not the connection. It's one mm. with three or one with five. So yeah. it lets you play with what you think is a better connection, which I believe very much that each one of us needs to pair it the way we want it, because mm -hmm. you see it in a different way than I see it. And yeah. it's not wrong or right. It's just each one has a different aesthetic. So yeah. it's a uh, it's a nice play. But also the reason was because it was easier to get it right, mm -hmm. because I wasn't mm -hmm. I didn't know how to do it in the beginning, <laughs> so that was much easier. <laughs> do you see your work always being, you know, uh, published in books? Do you see doing shows? I mean, how do you, I mean, I know you've got a big Instagram following, but Instagram is like, that's the way, the way a lot of people are looking at photographs these days, not, not necessarily in books. Uh, I prefer books, um, frankly, yeah. but, and shows and stuff like that. But how do you see your photographs being seen in the future in all different ways? Or what's your, what's your primary desire? Whatever is, comes up, I don't know. I, I'm open to it. So you are, it's, yeah. I'm very open. I'm very, I mean, I know that for me to do a podcast as I'm doing, I'm shy. So mm -hmm. for me, it takes, Maybe it takes uh, doing more of this to be feel a hundred percent comfortable, uh, but I think we adapt, and it uh, it it's nice. Every every way you can show your your pictures is great. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm very happy with the Treviso thing that they show it in the town. I think it's gorgeous, mm -hmm. or a billboard that went up in. In L.A., I love the thought of having a billboard. I told my family, <laughs> we all need to go to L.A. to watch it because it's such a wonderful thing. You know, Did you it, have someone there photograph it for you so you could see it? I Did didn't you? have anyone photograph oh, no. it. Oh, no. But they, they were very nice that they sent the link of the location. So you have a little map and you know exactly where it is. So it's, it's, so, hey, it's any way you you show your pictures is great and i agree with you i would prefer i prefer book over instagram because instagram is more it's it's difficult because you're not showing a sequence you're showing mm -hmm. one thing and and that thing sometimes needs to be very eye catching but not so much sometimes not so good but eye catching goes first than good <laughs> So it's a different, different thing. Yeah, I mean, I always think that you know, in, when we're looking at pictures on Instagram, we're only spending a very short, short period time. of time with it. Yeah, and like a book that 
I'm I'm holding here in my hands. I've come back to many times and touched and felt and thank you. Got a chance to look, yes to, to look and and spend more time. But it's 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 great to hear you saying that you're embracing everything. You know, it's however however people can get to see your pictures and whatever their experiences, whether they're putting two pictures together that you didn't think would go together or exactly. You know, in a thick book or scrolling on a screen and, and, and still seeing your work. So that's, that's uh, great to, to hear. Ward, I'm going to hand yeah. it over to you for a second. Yeah. So even before reading your bio and now seeing the books and um, I have to say you're a huge um, inspiration to the 40 plus crowd. Um, Thank you. Because I had, I had, you know, had a dark when I was a kid and so on. And I rediscovered, or re-engaged with photography when I was 50. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, similarities and, and types of perspective and the way we th think about how to work now at this time in my life. And, uh, you know, and your work is so, you know, beautiful and meaningful, um, Thank you. as they go Thank through you it. so much. And because you said you didn't have any background in photography, you were surrounded by art and so on. Do you think there are any insights that you could you could share with those of us that are you know approaching or in middle age um, who decided to pick up photography? Is there something that that I know uh, you yes. talked about letting go and so on? Yes, I think you have to enjoy it and don't be caught up with the technical part because mm -hmm. you go crazy mm -hmm. and. Just try to observe what is around you and and don't be afraid of it. It doesn't matter. It's okay if it won't come out well today or tomorrow. It will be okay. You'll have fun and and you'll construct something in the long term. So it's it's fine. Yeah. I think you shouldn't be scared. I think that that's the problem with us is that we want immediate gratification. You have to be good tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It won't happen. You, it won't. You need to give it time. It has to brew. It has to have some time. And you have many bad pictures, but it's okay also. <laughs> uh, you, you know, you can't be the genius that came up. Oh, now I'm a genius. I'm, <laughs> ah. You have many, many, many bad ones. Yeah. But it's okay. You learn through the bad one. And you learn, okay, this was bad because of this. But if I get it. Do it in another, you know, and, and revisit them and mm -hmm. understand why they were good, why they were bad, and maybe I have to focus more on that. Yeah. I think it's not being scared of scared of of you being disappointed with yourself or scared of criticism. You just have to go, and not everyone will like them, but it's okay. It's it's fine. I think we. We spend a lot of time trying to to prove that we can do things perfectly well. We can't. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's a learning process. Yeah, I think you said you know you're, you're saying how much you're not a technical person. Oh, I'm and, really not. And you should by, see how bad really? I am. Okay. <laughs> It, it's funny because you know I it, it's hard to see that in your work because it's it, it, the it's it's very well done and um, but what we were saying before about like if you're not technical then then this if you're not overly technical I mean you have to be some technical you have to know how to use a camera and do a few things but you you end up with this act of discovery uh, all the time if if it's if if you don't know what's going to happen maybe. The, maybe you go into it with always a sense of discovery, exactly, or something and, like a and, child going yes, in. Yeah, you yes. know, finding that's it. That's what photographer does for me. It makes me be a child again. Mm. And isn't that what Picasso said? Is that we could all sort of, you know, visit our art as if we were a child again? Um, that's really interesting to to come up with that. So yeah, that act of discovery. It's almost like um a vacuum that keeps pulling you and pulling you into into seeing what you can do and not knowing your it, because you're not technical you don't know your limitations i have I guess. no idea right it, no yeah. idea really no idea and it's a surprise sometimes bad and good surprise there's everything 
but it's yeah. like a treasure hunt. I compare it with mm-hmm. a treasure hunt. That I'm there, I'm trying, and whatever comes will be okay because if it's bad I learn from it. If it's good I'm lucky. So it's okay. Yeah. So So there's really no bad or good. It's just a it's always an act yeah. of discovery. Yeah. Exactly. And, it's always a discovery. Yes. Yeah. Exactly can you uh is. can you give us a little bit of a hint about what your next book is without giving too much away? I mean is it Oh uh, it's about what you were talking about, you know, this thing of um reflections and scarty it's something that i i when i was printing i saw on the floor they have these enormous metals that they print your pictures one on top of the other and they throw it away Mm. and i noticed this and I said, oh, my God, my pictures. And they are, for example, all yellow or all shocking blue or, mm-hmm. or shocking pink or blue. And it's your pictures all mixed up because it's the machine. It's the process. And they are called scarti. And scarti means uh, what they throw away. And uh, so I thought about, well, I called them. It was my last day at EBS, and I called them up, and I asked them if I could buy a few of these metals to keep. And they were very kind, and they gave it to me. They gave me five. Wow. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because they always use it for the next book. They clean it with a solvent, and then they reuse it. Mm. And I didn't want them to clean mine. I said, can you keep it? Can you sell? And then he said, no, I'll give it to you. So I got nice. five. Wow. wow. And uh, But the idea of the Scarti is what is my next book. It's the idea of uh, things overlaid on top of things. Mm. So it's the same idea that I saw in the, that metal. Mm. Wow. So You're it's looking- a completely different thing than what I did until now. So it's, uh, it was a, it's an interesting challenge. <laughs> Do you know when about so you'll be done with it? Uh, I think I'll be printing it around March of next okay. year. Yeah. So well, I look forward to seeing that. Actually, yeah. I mean, the process of uh, choosing the pictures and the, you know, mm-hmm. oh, so I'd like to wrap up with one more question. And uh, it was, again, something I saw that you had uh, talked about in one of your interviews. And you said that uh, you agree with Brassai when he said that photography must suggest and not explain. Can you just tell us in the final minutes, like, why do you agree with him and what about that um, uh, inspired you in some way? I I don't like... Uh... I, I like you to see something and you come to your own conclusions and why would this affect you and what would be affected differently. I would, each mm-hmm. one of us, and I don't like people telling me what I have to feel because I don't think it's correct because it's not true. Mm-hmm. I don't think you see things the same and feel things because it's my experience. I'm looking at something that evokes something in me because of my experience and yours are going to be different. So I, I'm against te- telling you exactly what I'm, you have to feel. You don't have to feel. Maybe you like it. Maybe you don't like it. Maybe you cry. Maybe you laugh. Maybe. Mm. And we should be individuals with different experience and, and not be uh, needing that people tell you what you need to feel. I think that's very wrong. I think it uh, doesn't give you margin for you to grow also. You need to grow because you're conscious, okay, this makes me joyful. Why? Where does it come from? What What does it evoke? What? Then you understand yourself better. Right. If people are telling you what you have to feel, you're we're just robots. I, I That's my point of view, so... I, I like to discover things. I don't like people telling me. That's why photography is a discovery. I, you know, I just go. It's exactly that. It's the instinct in me. I like mm-hmm. to be like that. Wow. 
great, 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 uh, great ending to this. Thank Sandra. you very much. <laughs> Thank Antonio. you so much, Sandra, Thank for you. spending the this time with us and giving your time. And uh, good luck putting your new big book together. <laughs> yeah, I know. Thank you. Yeah. I, that, I'm really looking forward to seeing that when that comes out. And really, thank you so much. All all the best to you, and good luck with these uh, this new book. I'm going to try to say it again. Uh, Aguas de Oro. <laughs> I, I hope Perfect. I'm okay. <laughs> Please Very forgive me. Good. <laughs> Uh, Waters of Gold, I, I think. It's, uh, yes. Yeah. And yeah, really good luck with that. Um, Thank you so much. It was so Antonio great to meet Ward. you and talk to you. Yeah, it was Thank awesome. you it was very, great. very much. Thank you for everything. Okay. I loved also to, it's very nice to have the challenge of asking yourself these questions also, because mm -hmm. sometimes you don't. So it's, uh, it's good to reflect on them. Yeah, and it's also it's it's good. I I find it's good to say them out loud. Sometimes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Instead of just letting it in your head all the time, it's good exactly. to say it. Exactly. Well, we really nice. appreciate you you spending some time with us, and and uh, hopefully we can when your new book comes out, you might uh, consider coming back on the show and talking to us about that. When that thank happens. you so much. Okay, Very thank grateful. You. Thank you. Okay. Right. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> So that was so great having her uh, talk to us. Tonight. Yeah, her her spirit it was infectious. It's, Wasn't it? Was it? Ama amazing. Oh. Uh, Even as you know, when she was talking about how she has no idea. <laughs> right. Know? She right. goes. Uh, she works very fast. And what's your technique? I have no technique. <laughs> I thought I, that I, was great. I love it because it. We also, you know, we're always getting so wrapped up in technique and everything. Everybody's trying this stuff, and it's great to see someone who's just giving herself into the art, you know, mm -hmm. and, and all the stuff um, is sort of in the background, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. And the whole thing about uh, letting go, like, yeah, that ask that, that part of, of her, uh, her, her approach is just, and, and too, especially for uh, folks that are taking up photography or rediscovering it, like, uh, like me, like what, what can you do and just mm -hmm. go and shoot and let go. Yeah, I thought and that was amazing for her to 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 pick up the camera. Um, you know, so late in life, and that's so late. She's not that old, but <laughs> excuse me. But you know what I mean. Like most of us, are, like are in photography, because you know we're we're starting off with cameras really early, and and for someone to pick up a camera and then in such a short period of time go from not knowing anything to where she is and the kind yeah. of photography she's producing. Like you know, I really I did think that. You know, I did ask her this, but I did think like, you know, she's been a photographer all her life. She's just waiting for the <laughs> for yeah. that moment to, to, you know, when the stars aligned, you know, and her her daughter taking her to the, you know, Alex and Rebecca Webb uh, um, workshop in Barcelona. Yeah. Like there's the sp like that was it. You know, that was mm -hmm. part she was like storing up all that visual energy. Well, she did talk about childhood right in the beaches. Right. So yeah, that, that yeah. was a revisiting uh, I mean, I, I talk, like what uh, I think I've said before too, uh, for myself, when I do something that I'm particularly proud of, I'm telling my inner 12 year old, this is the way it should look, you know? Really? Yeah. Yeah. I, I do that. Like, you know, I'm, I'm saying, see, see kid, this, <laughs> this is what you're supposed to do. This is what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I am looking forward to her next book and hopefully we'll get a chance to see that as well. And it'd be great to have her back mm -hmm. on, but yeah, I was really, really excited that um, that we were able to get her and and have that uh, great talk with her. Um, feel, you know, gratitude. Yeah, gratitude. <laughs> gratitude to everybody who helped put that together, especially um, book publisher. And I'm trying to get her name now. Where, Sarah. Oh, Sarah. Oh, from uh, Radius Books. Oh, it is Radius. Yeah, Radius. Because yeah. she was talking about David from Radius, right? Yeah. yeah. Who did the well, uh, Who did the internal? Yeah, it's I and I like you know um, in a sense uh, being able to spend a lot of you know having the book, being able to spend some time with it before we uh, are, are are speaking with uh, you know Sandra in this case. Um, it I like my introduction to her being the book rather than like an Instagram uh, mm -hmm. account or something like that because it's just a great way to her her the, in this case the pictures are presented in such a way that we're just like, it's just mind blowing. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and so I had not seen her Instagram account prior to this. I only, only did it after. And I, I, for me, I kind of preferred that intro, you know, to see how the pictures are printed, how they're meant to be seen. And I love that she, she embraced all the, all the different ways of seeing, you know, photography. Uh, and yes, she agreed with me that, you know, still likes the books, you know, like the book yeah. being, uh, sort of the, the, the premier way of, of looking at work, but yeah, yeah. I, that I, was a good visit. And, uh, yeah, no, I'm. I'm I'm so happy that we were able to talk with her. Yeah, me too. Um, so we'll hopefully have her on, you know, when she has her next book published, and uh, I'll look forward to uh, whatever else, whoever else we can get on the show. Absolutely. I really I really enjoy doing the interviews. So, anyhow, why don't we wrap it up? What's uh, where can we find you in the world? I'm um, Ward Rosen Fine Art on Instagram. Um, I'm also Ward Rosen Photography on Facebook. And uh, Mark Ryerson and I are still selling our rodeo book, which is yeah, at yeah. at Rosin R O S I N dot C A, and that's uh, my uh, Squarespace site where we uh, we sell the book. And uh, finally, I have a, a, a website, a little little enterprise that I started that uh, I sell uh, Asian source lenses and lens adapters, and it's Ornis Photo O R N I S dot photo. And and the running joke is a <laughs> unofficial sponsor. <laughs> unofficial sponsor, yes. Are you going to get, uh, there's a couple of new lenses that are coming out. Have you, have you seen, there was like a couple, another um, F.095 Five, lens. Yes, yeah. What I'm, was the brand? I saw some. Oh, there's, them. well, there's, well, there's the Miticon, the. Um, it wasn't that, it's not the Seven Artisans, it's oh, a it's new a, one. Is it a, a, a TT Artisans one? Not the um, TT Artisans. There's some, there's another brand out. I just watched a video for. I, I'm not. I'm failing here. Uh, coming up. Yeah. No. Sorry. Well, the only other one's Viltrox. Um, no, there's a new one. There was not an autofocus one. Nope. Then there's I just don't know. I don't. Okay. know. Okay. Well, you have to get this one. I, okay. I, I will. I tonight. will see. <laughs> the issue with some of the some of these suppliers is they want you to have a really big order. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, that was the case with a couple of suppliers, which is why you don't see them on my site yet. Okay. Well, but uh, you know, work on it. Yeah, you know. I gotta work on it. Yeah, okay. I gotta make it bigger and bigger. And uh, you can find me. Where can you find me? Uh, Instagram and Twitter at am rosario. Um, our website is uh, streetshots dot photography. And uh, check out our website there. We and uh, what else? We no, no other place. You know, Facebook Rosario Photo. That's where you can find me. And uh, yeah, we're we're looking to get uh, more people on the show, so we're working. We're doing it. We're actually doing it. Working the list, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's the that's the show for mid September. We're we'll have something. I'm sure we'll have something really interesting for the end of September. We'll figure it out. I don't know what it is yet. <laughs> I'll figure it out in the last minute. <laughs> yeah, like I usually do. All right, Ward. All right, it great. It was great hanging out with you. Nice to talk. All right, talk to you later. See everybody in a couple of weeks. Bye-bye. Bye.